How's it going? All good. All good. How are you? I'm so good. I have pressed record on my computer. Yeah, me too. And I'm all good. Um, yay! I've not seen you in so long. I know. We've been trying to do this little podcast chat for, I swear to God, it's been about six years, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Like when we did, because we actually recorded um ages ago yeah when and 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 i sort of never released it i think that's the my problem like i record them and then i'm like oh i've got a plan and then just something else comes in and just knocks knocks it out the water (laughs) i remember we talked about um reckless remember the tune we um, that was it yeah that was it oh my god yeah and it was like one of my first solo pop releases yeah yeah Hello everyone and welcome to McCool and the Gang, which is my podcast. I'm Natalie McCool and I have um, people on every week, every week, no, every month who I ardently admire creatively. And this month my guest is Katie Alex. (laughs) And thank you so much for coming on, Katie. How is it going? Because I've not spoken to you in about an age. (laughs) Oh, uh, better than ever better than ever yes all exciting things but it's like it's at like a speed and like i can't think of the word we're just breakneck speed yeah that's it everything is just kind of fl- you know what everything is kind of piecing together and i feel like <clears throat> all the years of hard work are starting to just pay off you can see it and it's a good yeah. feeling but also it's like I'm a bag of nerves all the time because I'm like, I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. No, you were like, as if you will, like everything I've been seeing on your socials, because people don't speak in real life anymore. Everything I've been seeing on your socials has been like amazing. And I'm really happy for you because, you know, after like we've written together over the years a a few times. And I think the first time we wrote together was really like a good five, six years ago. And, you know, I just think you're really talented and I'm really happy for you. So it's great to see. Thanks, ma'am. Back at you. Why don't you tell me about the sort of recent uh, projects you've been doing? Because you've been doing a lot of top lining for big sort of DJ producer acts. How's that been going? Uh, amazingly. Do you know what? It's just, it's so exciting getting to work with so many new people and different genres. And I know like mm. I've always kind of done pop and dance side by side. But, you know, since the summer, really, after I kind of got my pop EP out the way, which is something I just kind of wanted to do for me, really, because of so many obstacles, just get that out of the way, move on. And now I'm doing dance. And I think some people maybe don't realise how many genres and subgenres there are within the dance world. And it's just so nice as a, a vocalist and a writer getting to work on so many different sounds with different people and it's just a challenge more than anything but you learn so much about yourself as a writer and a vocalist yeah you don't realize do you because I've sort of dipped my toe in to you know trance and sort of like EDM over the years and it's such a I have to say it's a lovely network of people yeah and I think genuinely there's like a really passionate dedicated audience and to work to like know that and work with that is great um and I've seen you sort of you know going f- flying around like Miami LA um <laughs> how's it been sort of you know going to these amazing places and and working on music which is the one thing that everybody all of us want to do all the time <laughs> it's it's insane it's you know what it's one of them it, oh, with Miami, it didn't kind of hit until I was there. Yeah. And you were like jet lagged to shit. <laughs> I was so jet lagged. Literally every day I was there, I was waking up at 4 a.m. Um, mm. So I just sat on the balcony like with a coffee. Um, and we were right by the beach in Miami Beach. So I was getting to see the sunrise. And I think it was the first morning when I was jet lagged and I was sitting there like six o'clock and the sun started coming up over the sea. And I was like, oh my god what the fuck what? how am myself. I here like I was back yeah. home before and I'm here and I'm about to write tunes with these producers and I was like yeah it was quite yeah. surreal in that moment um god, but I, as well I'm like I'm such a home bug so like 
there's always mm. that fight of like getting a bit homesick and being like, oh, I want to go home. I'm always interested in uh, when I speak to other people who like travel a lot with with music. Um, is there anything that you do to sort of feel at home in these new places? Where because it's it can be quite a lot of pressure to know that you're going into this camp. You've got to prove yourself. I mean, it's a ni- it's a glorious place to be, but there is a, always that in the back of your head, like shit, I really need to prove myself. And I just wondered, like, for people like us who who are like love being at home, um, is there anything that you do to make yourself more comfortable? Um, f- FaceTime the family a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a doggy group chat, so they'll send me plenty of pictures of the dog, so I'm not missing out. Um, so cute. Do you know what? When we had the Hamburg, one of the guys who worked for the publishers um, was from Heighton. So obviously there was like oh inst- instant bond. And then uh, yeah, I think he might have been a, a subtle blue, to be honest, but uh, Liverpool were playing Man United. Are you a blue? I think I'm probably described as a subtle blue. Oh, gosh. Vi- via my dad. My dad's from Everton, you see, so by proxy. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no joke i just that's so cool it's so funny when you meet someone I, we i sing in this other band called white horses and we did this gig on a boat it's like festival on a boat and there was um like a girl stood next to me on the when we were on the deck having a drink and she just started talking to her and she was like by the way where where are you from but by the way this is in the middle of the sea in the mediterranean right in the middle of the mediterranean freaking sea and she was like because I know your accent, like, where are you from? And I was like, witness. And she was like, I'm from Runcorn. That's mad. Literally next door. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but they're so mad, those those moments, aren't they? Mm. But I guess that immediately just makes you feel a bit more, oh, you know what? I can fucking do this. Yeah. Like, do you know what? It was nice because, like, <laughs> he kept coming into the room I was in in this, the camp and being like, have you heard of this? Or have you heard of that? Or I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was hearing the accents as well. Oh, like he had so the nice. old Scouse accents, and I was like, "Okay, mm. feel at home. This is good." Yeah, it's always nice when you hear that. Like voice is so I don't know. Like yeah, voice is so important, and that's why I think that vocal. Like when you're top line in a song, it's like the, the the most human thing about music. I think is the voice in a way. So uh, yeah, and this is what this is another question that I wanted to get your like. Um, views on like when you're when you're top lining um it I find it's such a strange role to sit in um because on the one hand you want to put your sort of like imprint on what you're doing your own personal sound on it and you know your your lyrics what your feelings but then on the other hand you're conscious about what it's for who it's going to what their audience wants to hear so I just wondered how you approach that. I Most of my writing comes from personal experience or, you know, yeah, mostly that. I'll touch on things, you know, it doesn't, it's not always a true story, but maybe the emotions behind it are true. Um, it's a weird one, I understand what you mean, because I think for me, the I, I'll immediately know what kind of story or angle I'm going to take a top line from the chords I hear because obviously if something's in a minor key and it's got a, a sad kind of vibe about the chords like the progression then mm. I'm not gonna write about a happy time in my life or you know pull on happy memories it's gonna be something mm. sad um but there has been times I suppose when I've, I've written something and then I've been I thought listening to the other tracks that this person's released you know I don't know if it matches but you know I've sent it off and they've been happy with it so I don't know it's I just kind of straight through to myself. If people like what I write, then great. If they don't, then I okay. can't really do anything about it. But I'm not going to change who I am as a writer. The reason I write is to express myself and to mm. talk about the things that I've gone through. So, yeah. Right. That's that's interesting. Like, I love that. And I actually have a real hard time with that. Not because, um, not because like, what I'm writing isn't me, but sometimes i'm i'm so i care so much about um whether they they're, they're going to like it or whether they're going to use it and i really want them to and i'm sort of like constantly worrying about um the, the the audience that it's for so i guess that's sort of 
maybe skews what I'm doing a little bit, but it's really hard line to tread, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know something on that is like something I've noticed working in the dance scene is everything is so fast paced. Like people just want to make music and get it out as quickly as possible. That seems to be anyway, the, the people I've worked with. So it's kind of taught me to, I mean, for a long time, I've not really been offended if someone didn't like an idea. Um, but especially now in like the dance scene, if someone doesn't like something I've worked on, it's not it's not anything against me. Everyone's got different tastes. Like, you know, some yeah. people will send me tracks and it's just not my kind of thing. Um, yeah. So it's the same kind of way. But also like, you know, if someone doesn't like an idea I've done for them, just recycle the idea. You know, someone else might yeah. want it. And I just don't really get offended if, yeah if someone didn't yeah. like something and I think as well there is you know there's some subjects that are too personal to write about like I never feel like I can do them justice but some things are just so easy like you know we've all been through them shitty relationships and I've probably wrote about a million songs about one person <laughs> do you know what I mean but some things are just yeah. easy to write about yeah I mean I yeah I've never really I've never so much like gotten offended if someone didn't like my idea like as yeah I totally agree like all tastes are different and not everyone's gonna like the same like turn of phrase or turn of melody or whatever but it's it's more like um it, it, I guess it's like what you think they will like a lot of the time they go for something completely different don't they like has that ever happened to you yeah that has happened like sometimes people have come for like acapellas um of yeah. mine that like, I've got a little bank and they'll pick one and I'll listen to their music and go, why on earth have you picked that? Like, the, yeah, yeah. I don't understand, but like, um, you know, it's just nice to have a song picked anyway. It's just, <laughs> exactly. It's nice that somebody's picked it. I always feel like, um, I don't know, like when I've heard an in initial demo and I'm like, that's super cool, but I would not have put that bit there. But then when I've heard the finished one, I'm like, okay, I, I really get what you were trying to do. Like, sounds fucking great. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's like getting demoitis and sometimes you're so used to your own idea as it is that you can't hear it in any other different way. Definitely. Um, but do you know what? Something I do now is if someone sends me a mix and it's, you know, they're like, oh, we've changed quite a bit of it. I think, right, just give me a few days then. I'm not going to comment. Yeah. I need like a few yeah. days to listen and get the old one out the way because like exactly it happened recently where I sent a top line off they loved it sent a mix back and the song had completely changed and at first I was a bit like what what on earth like I don't yeah. I didn't expect it um give myself a few days to listen and I was like yeah okay, I actually know this is like way better than the original but on the first listen I was a bit like oh why have they changed it I really loved the yeah. other one yeah but I suppose yeah it's just a process I've learned yeah. to kind of put in places to just give yourself a bit of time and so like refreshing your ears exactly yeah. yeah I had that um not recently but like a, a good like maybe like a year ago or something me and my mate worked on this track um and I think what happened was another another producer picked it up and worked on it and completely like re reproduced it in a different entirely different genre it was like um what it ended up as was like a weekend song, the weekend song, one of his sort of, um, you know, his re most recent album. It's all quite synthy and very, um, almost like, like quite dancey and synthy. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> what did it originally like, sound like? That sounds great. I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> it is called forever starts tonight. Mm. Um, yeah, I think we just had it like as an almost like an acoustic -y, like ballad or something and then they just p put it to this mad it was so, it was like um 21 pilots meets the weekend and I was I was loving it. I was loving it though. I was like, "What? How did you get from the A to B like that?" Yeah. Insane. Um but yeah. What's what's like one of your favorite sort of uh releases that you've worked on then recently? <sighs> favorite release recently um possibly oh, like, uh, under the night um mm. so that was one of the ones from the hamburg camp earlier on this yeah. year and 
I just remember when I first heard the the track that Martin played us, and I felt like I was in. So this is how I have to describe it to them. You know the scene in Interstellar where yeah. Matthew McConaughey is kind of like trapped in this like time warp. Sorry, if this is spoiling Interstellar for anyone. I, you know what? I've never seen Interstellar because I'm like terrified of space. <laughs> All right, so I absolutely <laughs> love space. Like. Space, yeah, oh, time. I can't watch it. You know, gravity is like my idea of like that's like a panic attack in a nutshell for me. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. But I, at the same time, I'm slightly obsessed with space. So yeah, I weird. love it. I just love. I love hearing different theories about space and time. Anything sci-fi on Netflix is being watched. Like okay, nice. So when I heard nice. this song, I instantly felt like I was in. I was in Interstellar, and I was like, okay, I'm want to write on this song mm. um so that's why there's like so many references to space and time and feeling trapped and lost in darkness and stuff like that so that was so much fun to work on and then when i found out it was getting released and neptunica were jumping on um we got sent a new mix which obviously had his stamp on it mm. and it just became even more of like this little stomping like <laughs> I was like a techno kick, but right. Uh, right. just a heavier dance track. And I already loved the song to bits. And then I heard that and I was like, oh crap, this is sick. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was really exciting to work on that one. Nice, yeah. nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, do you have, and this is like another question that I just love hearing people answer. Like, do you have specific sort of, phrases or like imagery so to get like really deep in the singer song or anything but like specific phrases or imagery that you just love like me I, I, I love the word moment right now I just want to use the word moment in everything I'm doing <laughs> yeah that that's one I've used quite a bit um one I seem to use quite a lot and it's it's something I've like noticed and I'm trying to take it out of songs now is the word escape mm. um I think, I don't know where it comes from. Um, I think there has been moments, you know, we've probably talked about the certain relationship and wrote about it at some point, but, you know, there was a relationship I had when I was, it was my first proper relationship and it was like three years of feeling completely trapped mm. in with someone who I, I knew I didn't want to be with. And I think, you know, and then there was another one to follow that kind of <laughs> did the same thing again and... I spent a lot of my 20s being trapped in relationships. That's how it felt. Mm. So I think that's a kind of concept that I found really easy to write about yeah. is yeah. trying to escape from something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting because I always believe that like things that you're experiencing and you don't even know how you feel about them they come out like years later in songs and that's happened to me so many times like so many times and then and then I'll look back at the song and then I won't even realize um until like years later that that song was about that thing that happened years before it's like it blows my mind yeah I suppose it's just you've had time to reflect on it and it's not so mm. raw anymore so maybe yeah yeah, it's not right there think, in front of your head anymore, but you still write about it and go, "Oh, fucking hell, am I still, am I still writing about that person?" <laughs> yeah, that yeah, it, it, songs like tell you a lot about yourself, don't they? Yeah. And sometimes it's you don't, you just don't want to know. I'm like, oh, I just don't want to think about that right now. Um. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I've always said songwriting for me is like a form of therapy. Yeah, like yeah. you know, I've tried like you know. Friends, I know friends who've got journals and they'll write, you know, their thoughts down at the end of the day. And I've tried doing that myself. And when I write it, I'm like, this is shit. It's, you know, I felt a bit sad today. I felt this today. Yeah. And it's like, am I actually a songwriter? This is crap. <laughs> <laughs> but for some yeah, reason, like if, I'm, if it's like rhyming, that. it's really easy to write about. Yeah, yeah. Like all the banal st Sometimes I think like get the banal shit out of the way and then... You get the poetry in. By the way, someone has just commented asking if, if you're May from Sex Education. 
<laughs> and you do you do sort of have a look of her and that's a good thing because she's absolutely gorgeous oh um, well, that's nice so that's fun thank you <laughs> um yeah i always say as well like same same as what you just said i always say that people who need to work through deep issues or trauma may just write songs mm. like just write songs because they'll get you out of it or at least they'll force you to face the, the sort of deeper things yeah um yeah it's mad isn't it um i i wanted to ask you about your sort of like pro- production journey because i know that um you've like started producing a lot of your own stuff and um i think it's great like i've also been on this journey um and i'm just wondering like wh- what sort of what 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 program do you use what sort of effects chain do you have on your voice like all the geeky stuff please tell me <laughs> Oof, okay um so i use logic always have just because mm-hmm. I, I started on garage band when i was like 16 when i first got a yes. MacBook. so obviously it's just easier um i i use splice or i say i use it I'll, I'll go like half a year without ever logging in and then I'll have a binge and be like, oh, inspiration. Oh, <laughs> Let's find some stuff. Yeah. It's a good old all the rises. <laughs> exactly. It's a good old splice. Um, mm. And then um, vocal chain. So, ooh. do you keep it simple or do you go full out 10 plugins? I, I used to, yeah, I used to do like 10 plugins. Um, but recently I got a new MacBook and I thought, do you know what, rather than uploading my last uh, channel strip I'm just gonna start from scratch um and I'm glad mm-hmm. I did because I've got my vocals to a point now where I'm pretty happy with them but then again I was happy with the last set so it's I think it's easy to just kind of go copy paste you know or just upload a chat a saved like channel strip just to save yeah. time but I think it's, it's probably a good idea every few months to just have a little rejig of your plugins and just keep it fresh and you know everything's mm. just trial and error like yeah. I'll try and watch YouTube videos but I really don't have patience a lot of the time um, me neither I'm just like can you can you write it down instead of having a video where I have to scroll like just write it down for me I know, I know. <laughs> so yeah um I think we're oh, trying to think the, the main plugins obviously with dance music I I've started doing something which I I think on some of the songs, so maybe Glow mm. on Spotify does this. There's probably a few other tunes I've got on there that do it, but I'll have my main vocal, which is pretty clean in the sense that, like, it's you know, it's got your compression, um, reverb, delay, whatever, or EQ, blah blah blah. But, um, I'll have a left and right double, and I'll turn the formant shift on Little Alter Boy down, and mm-hmm. it just it, I found it gives my whole vocals of the lead and the doubles this really lush kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's just a lush tone that seems to work Thickness, with yeah. my natural tone anyway. Um, yeah. Obviously it doesn't work on every song, but certain tracks, mm. maybe the bit more deeper house or things with a bit more space to allow it to kind of mm. come through. Um, I found that definitely works. Yeah, nice. I always um I'm in I'm in a real like not not vocodery but sort of like you know you go through different phases where you're just like using the same sort of sound on your like vo- vocal parts almost and right now I'm definitely in sort of like stacked chord vocals so like you know the melody moves but then you've got harmonies that are just literally um same notes as the chords and they move with the chords like i'm obsessed with it at the moment honestly might have to try a bit there oh, it sounds so fucking great <laughs> it's always yeah. interesting to see how people approach harmonies because like mm. ha- harmonizing vocals is like my favorite bit of the whole yes. thing and like i've been in sessions with people who have done the choir kind of thing but they've um so they've sang like one note and then another note of the chords, but the whole thing is just, I'm singing at this note, and that's all we're going to do. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to sing at this note, and that's all I'm going to do. And I yeah. sat there being like, this is 
a bit long-winded. And then I've heard it, heard it back and been like, oh shit, this actually sounds really sounds good. Sounds cool, yeah. 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 I love like weird, you know what I love? Like in, in pop or like in, in some kind of tr- trance thing or electronic thing, like putting in a really weird harmony. Um, you just see people's faces like, yeah something that ain't I, gonna work and then it works and I'm like yeah, yeah. baby <laughs> Defo. something I always find I it's like one of these little rules I have with myself but um I've done it recently on a song that I've just sent off for someone and the main melody like the lead travels upwards like it's climbing stairs so then I yes. whenever I've got a melody doing that I always want a harmony crossing it going down like this yeah and if you get it right it doesn't always work but sometimes it's just the most beautiful thing to mm. hear when when they eventually cross and it's like oh they're, they're, it's just so oh, nice yeah yeah you're painting with your voice really aren't you pretty much yeah i worked with um i, I sang one of my songs with this choir called london contemporary voices a few years ago it was like 2019 i think 2020 um and the so the arrangement that we had, it was a really interesting arrangement. And I don't know whether you've come across this before, but it's apparently it's like um, an actual technique that a lot of composers use when arranging vocals. Um, and it's sort of the same thing. So every every line goes from the bottom note up to the up to the top note. Um, and every sort of syllable goes on, full, follows that scale. And it's like the maddest thing you've ever heard. And yeah, they had, um, they had some of the choir doing that. And they had some of the choir sort of sitting on some of the chord notes. And honestly, it was like, holy shit. Like the person who discovered this technique must be... What's it called? Just... A king. I can't. I, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I'll fi- I'll find it and send it to you. But it's it's it sounds wild. It's it maybe like you could use it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going always, straight on like, YouTube to see if I can hear someone doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll find out and send send it to you. Um, but yeah, I'm always I, I could talk about v- recorded vocals fucking all day, <laughs> like all day. <laughs> Yeah, so tell tell me about Glow then. Glow. Ah, oh, so <laughs> Glow was my first released produced track. Obviously I've made demos Woo-hoo! for stuff in the past. Yeah. And I made like a little mixtape in the pandemic, but this was like the first one that I was like, right, this is going out as my own like release. Um, oh fuck yeah. Because that's the dream. Like when it comes to the solo project, you know, I I'm not at that point yet, but Eventually, mm. I'd like to be at a point where it is just me singing, writing, producing everything. It's just mine. Um, so yeah, Glow, Glow was one of them. Um, it's it's a bit of a shady track. Oh uh, yeah, rightly so. <laughs> it needed to be said. You know, yeah. Someone was trying Who's to. It uh, about? No, you don't have to answer that. No, um, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, no names. Not I'm getting. You know, not going to name and shame. But. Uh, yeah. No, it was just someone was just trying to sabotage my whole musical career because wow, God knows why. Um, you know, trying to lock lock songs up that didn't belong to them and blah, blah, blah. And it was just a whole saga that went on for like a year, you know, getting... Jeez, that sounds heavy. Getting, getting spied on by fake accounts when I blocked accounts, you know. What? Getting spied, get, not even just me, like... My manager, my the label I was releasing with, my new producer, just this People little weird, weird fake account. Um, was just watching me stories every day, and it was just like, yeah, just a mad, mad, mad moment. And I remember feeling totally helpless um, mm. at one point, and I was on the way back from Bath, I think it was. Um, I was just like in tears, like I don't, I can't do anything. This is like so unfair that this person keeps doing this to me, mm. and I can't even like do anything back. And 
So I was like, do you know what I can do? I can write a fucking song about it. So <laughs> I'm like this in the passenger yeah, no, seat no. on my laptop no, no. with my headphones on. <laughs> yeah, just like right, getting this song done and uh, yeah. And then yeah. finished it off when I got home and yeah. And then the yes. EP had to be named after it because I, that was my favourite song on the EP. It's the one I feel most attached to. So it's sort of like a... Not like a revenge song. Those songs are always the best. Like, you you just have to say it, don't you? And it's it's. Do you know what yeah. I always I've said in the past? It's the beautiful thing about songwriting for me. Like I said before, like it's like a form of therapy, and I just find it fascinating that you can write about a moment in your life that's caused you so much grief, and you can turn it into this little thing that you love so much, and you you know, no one wants to sit there and think about times where they've been hurt and you know bad yeah. memories but then you can listen to this song over and over again and be so proud of it and turn this really horrible thing into this, a really beautiful thing yeah so thank you katie thank you for having where can me? we find you online um so everything is under katie alex music yeah so yeah instagram tw- i mean i don't use twitter so much i, I guess I'm so distracted by people's tweets on twitter <laughs> that i forget to actually tweet, <laughs> tweet. yeah I so yeah. but instagram is the main one yeah yeah i think instagram's the best for really getting to know someone as well yeah uh, an artist or a band yeah it's a bit more personal yeah yeah so yeah insta 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 forward slash katie alex yep okay music Katie, like, Katie, Katie Alex, Alex music. music. Yeah. Yes, get it right. Cool. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Katie. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening. And don't forget to subscribe and follow to this podcast. I'm Natalie McCool and you can find me and my music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and also on my website, nataliemccool.co.uk. Thanks. I think you're a magnet and I'm a magnet too.